the, the countervailing case for a lot of this stuff is the theory of multiple universes. I was, so ha I, I was hoping you would ask about that. And, yeah, and people essentially saying that, they, that we are a bubble universe that is on a, a bunch yeah. of other bubbles. Yeah. And that there are an infinite number of universes. So all of the probabilistic arguments that you make in favor of the chain of life and the creation of life, none of this matters in the end because there are a bajillion universes. Right. And, and we and just happen just to be one the, of them. We just happen to be the, lucky, the lucky ones. ones. Exactly. And they call it the observer selection effect. We think we're special because all the conditions that are necessary for our existence are so incredibly improbable. But in fact, some universe somewhere had to arise that produced organisms such as ourselves, conscious aware, uh, 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 conscious and intelligent agents indeed. Um, but there's a problem with this whole, this whole approach. Uh, many problems, in fact, and you might imagine in this new book that I'm doing, I'm writing quite a lot about the multiverse and critique of it. But let me give you the most important problem. And that is that the multiverse itself uh, requires a prior fine tuning. The multiverse hypothesis uh, presupposes prior fine tuning. Here's the problem. If you have all these different universes out there, a gabillion of them, um, if the universes aren't in some way connected uh, then what happens in one universe has no material effect on events in another universe. So the, the fact that there may be a gabillion other universes out there, if they're disconnected, doesn't change anything in our universe, including the probabilities of our being here. So to solve that problem, and in recognition of that problem, um, proponents of the multiverse have proposed a common cause for all the universes so that they can so they can portray the multiverse, all these different universes, as the result of something like a big cosmic lottery, where there's some mechanism that's churning out universes where eventually one of them would have to have the right combination of factors to make life possible. Now, the problem, though, is that in all the universe generating mechanisms that have been proposed, um, there is prior fine tuning. There's something called inflationary cosmology and another, uh, and, and there's something called the string theoretic landscape. So there's a string theory version of the multiverse and there's an inflationary cosmology version. And in both cases, there has to be exquisite fine tuning for the universe generating mechanism to actually produce multiple universes. So the, universe, the, the problem of the origin of the fine tuning has just been pushed back one generation. One of my philosopher physics colleagues, uh, Robin Collins, uses an illustration like this. He says, so imagine you have some chef presents a, a beautiful loaf of bread to you, and you say, oh, chef, I'd like to compliment your skill as a chef, but I know you didn't actually design the recipe. It was a bread-making machine. There was no design in this. There was just a bread-making machine that produced the bread. But even if that were the case, the bread-making machine required prior design, as did the recipe for the dough that was put in it. So th this is kind of analogous to what's going on with the multiverse. It only, it, it doesn't eliminate the problem of fine-tuning, it just push, pushes it back one generation.